Timor-Leste, better known as East Timor, is one of the world's newest countries, only becoming a sovereign state in 2002. After emerging from a brutal occupation by Indonesia, it's developed into one of Asia's most successful democracies. I sat down with its president, Jose Ramos Horta, to discuss his country's progress and its at times complicated relationship with some of its neighbours. I'm John Brain and this is TRT World's One on One. OK, well, your nation was only recognised by the UN as recently as 2002. How would you describe your progress since then? We have uh, made uh, tremendous progress. All our uh, social and economic indicators uh, show uh, impressive uh, progress in terms of life expectancy from less than 60 years at independence to now 70. Uh, we had only 21 medical doctors then, now we have uh, 1,200 medical doctors. One university, now we have 16 universities about 60,000 people in uh, university, universities. Uh, we had uh, electricity only in the capital and even then intermittent. Now electricity covers 96.1% of the territory. We have uh, zero debt, uh, literally you can say, uh, unlike many countries that are trapped uh, with the foreign debt, we have a substantial uh, sovereign uh, fund with which we finance our budget uh, entirely. We invest in a lot on uh, infrastructures, education, health, and importantly for all of this to happen, the country is very much at peace. We have absolute uh, tranquility, zero political violence, zero ethnic based or religious based violence. Uh, so. We are very pleased. There are still uh, enormous challenges. There is still too high poverty, particularly children, malnutrition, still too high. And the next step for you, of course, is to apply for ASEAN, the Association of Southeastern Nations. How important is it that you get accepted? A, uh, we, uh, we have been already accepted as observer with full rights, almost as a full member. We participate in all uh, meetings, including heads of states. We speak, we participate in the dialogue between ASEAN and dialogue partners, uh, US, Canada, Australia, Australia, China, India, European Union, etc. We participate in all of that. ASEAN means 700 million people, the market, while we are only 1.4. It means a $4 trillion economy. Uh, so it will bring a uh, huge benefit to Timor-Leste, particularly with uh, we being new, almost virgin territory concerning foreign direct investment. So we have already, in the anticipation of our joining ASEAN, numerous companies, potential investors from Brunei, Malaysia, Indonesia, South Korea, Japan, uh, aiming uh, at uh, Timor-Leste as their uh, uh, destination at the moment for uh, uh, major investments in hotels, banking, insurance, uh, um, air cargo hub, aircraft maintenance hub, financial center. All of these are part of ideas that have been explored by uh, these investors. Now you've, got a, a, you've had a fairly turbulent relationship with your neighbors, particularly Indonesia. Uh, more than 100,000 people died as a result of that conflict. What's the relationship like now with Indonesia? Exceptional, very good relationship. What do you put that down to? Have you forgiven them? First, they, uh, even before independence, we reach out to everybody for reconciliation. The, internally, among Timorese, to heal the wounds of the past, the wounds of the soul, of the body, more difficult to heal this wounds of the heart, of the soul, but we managed to reach out, the country is at peace, and they reach out to Indonesia. And Indonesia show statementship in, of a great nation in that uh, they accepted Timor-Leste independence and accepted our hand of friendship. And from day one, 
they have been contributing a lot in education. We have a thousand of Timorese living in Indonesia and studying there in universities. We have 70% of our international trade is with Indonesia. They have been our uh, main advocate to join ASEAN. So there cannot be better relationship than that. And that's thanks to our leadership, but also thanks to Indonesian leadership. All across the past 20 years, every president, uh, and but also with the society. It's not only uh, government to government, but uh, a lot of people to people relationship. Now on the subject of foreign relationships, uh, there is some wariness, certainly in the West, about your closeness to China. Uh, do you accept that? Are you uh, going to stay yeah. firmly aligned with China or do you consider uh, yourself aligned with China? Uh, no, no, we are not uh, aligned with China. But you're part of the Belt and Road Initiative. Yeah, we have a very good relationship with China, as we have a great relationship with Japan, with the Republic of Korea, South Korea, as we have with the United States, with Australia, New Zealand, with all the European Union countries. We have exceptional relations with the United Kingdom. Uh, uh, ongoing uh, active relationship and hopefully UK will uh, open an embassy in Timor-Leste. But on, on the subject of China, is, is there not a danger that as China becomes, uh, is perceived as more of a threat to the international community that more pressure will be put on you yeah. to disassociate No, I, I would say it's a bit silly on the part of the West, particularly the United States, uh, looking for enemies when there are none. China is not an enemy of the United States. It's a competitor, maybe a rival, but uh, rivalry is not necessarily negative. And, uh, uh, and the, the Chinese know, and we all know, for China to prosper, the region has to be peaceful, the US has to be prosperous, Europe has to be prosperous. China, prosperity built on peace, prosperity in the region and in the world. And uh, a more peaceful, prosperous China, prosperous region is also important for the United States. So uh, we have a, a very good relationship with the United States. Even during the turbulent years with Donald Trump, we still have a very good relationship uh, with the US. But, but what about a scenario where China uh, invades Taiwan, for example, and you're forced to make a, cho a choice? What would, you, what would that choice be? We condemn uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine is abominable, no justification. Of course, Ukraine is different from Taiwan in the sense Ukraine is a sovereign entity, Taiwan is part of China. But any uh, uh, forceful move, an invasion, potentially, hypothetically, and if that were to happen, it would be extraordinarily detrimental for peace in the region, for the well-being of China itself. Uh, it is a totally unthinkable scenario. But if it happened, you would cut ties with China? No, uh, that is uh, totally hypothetical anyway. Uh, and the, the, the issue is this. Taiwan is part of China, historically. It's a bit like uh, someone said, well, let's uh, recognize independence of uh, Alaska or of uh, Hawaii uh, or uh, Northern Ireland or Scotland, you know. No, <laughs> and, but this is a historical uh, legacy from uh, the past from the British, from the Americans, from the history, from the region. And uh, they have to negotiate and find a solution that's acceptable to the people on Taiwan that are living in a different way from mainland China. They have a different government, political system, diplomacy, politics, and the art of possible. For the sake of peace, harmony, they have to find a creative solution for China and for the people living in Taiwan. What about Myanmar? Where, where does Timor-Leste stand on that issue? 100% with the people of Myanmar, 100% with the democracy movement, with the NUG, National, Union, National Unity Government of Myanmar, 
that were legitimately elected. And uh, I have to say, thoroughly disappointed with the international community, uh, that almost indifference to the suffering of the people of Myanmar. Uh, I praise, commend ASEAN for the principal stance they are taking, but they have a very, ASEAN has very little support from the United States, from the United Kingdom uh, on this uh, situation. Uh, and in addition, uh, Russia is uh, the main backer, military backer of the military regime of Myanmar, providing them with uh, uh, shelter for billions of dollars, uh, provide them with weapons, and uh, so on. the people of Myanmar feel betrayed by the UN, by the international community. I'm pleased the Secretary General made a forceful reference to Myanmar in his speech today in the opening of the General Assembly. You're a very small country, obviously. Do you fear that your views can be swamped by these much bigger countries here at the UN, or do you think you can have a, an influence? Um, uh, well, I don't know about the influence, but uh, what I know is that there are millions of people around the world in Myanmar, at least listen to me. Uh, I know from feedback from Myanmar how the people feeling abandoned by the international community but feel very grateful that Timor-Leste is standing up for them. Uh, so, but we will be working always within ASEAN, with ASEAN leaders uh, in trying to resolve the problem of Myanmar. And uh, I believe democracy will prevail in Myanmar. The military losing the war, they cannot win. Uh, they control only 30% of the territory. The NUG, the National Ethnic Armies in Myanmar, control 60 to 70 percent of the territory. The vast, vast majority of the people are with the democracy movement, not with the military. And on the subject of democracy, Timor-Leste is actually considered perhaps the most successful democracy in the region. What, what do you put that down to and what advice could you give to other well, uh, first dem our, democratic movements? Our people are very, very independent-minded very persuaded uh, about democracy. Our people will never accept uh, an autocracy, let alone a military dictatorship. Uh, and uh, the commitment of all of us leaders. Uh, we do have a uh, functioning, active uh, democracy. Uh, very active debate in the parliament when it comes to policies, to the budget, allocation of uh, funding for different uh, uh, sectors of our economy, or, and uh, so on. Uh, a strong, in the, very strong independent media. We are rated by Reporters Without Borders, number 10 in the world in terms of press freedom. Uh, UK is uh, 27, I think. US, I think, is 40. Australia, I think, also 30 or 40. And uh, we are rated number 10 in the world out of uh, almost 200 countries and territories. Uh, so uh, I'm very happy with that. Uh, not because of the ranking, but because we, are, we do have a, a very active uh, free medium. Democracy is a fragile thing, though, as we've seen yes. uh, in recent years. Yes. Uh, what can you do to preserve it? Uh, in well, you know. Uh, um, Never take anything for granted. Uh, we look from U.S. experience under Donald Trump, a total disaster, but Do Donald Trump lost in the following election. We see it in Brazil uh, with uh, uh, Bolsonaro, the previous president. I spoke out in support of Lula when he was in trouble. I was one of the few, if not the only one in the world, who spoke out in support of Lula, and I challenged the justice uh, that was persecuting him and uh, in the end I was uh, proven right uh, and Lula came back to office. So we have a democracy, we have a setbacks, we have a successes. The same with dictatorships. Sometimes they win but then they lose because it's the nature of a human being want to be free. And uh, Setbacks, an autocracy, dictatorship, yes, yeah, temporary. Democracies can prevail longer, unlike a dictatorship. 
But when democracies deliver to the people, deliver security, deliver well-being, honesty, integrity, but when uh, democracy becomes only a game to achieve political power and with political power you enrich yourself and your friends, well, you betray democracy, betray the people, and democracy fall. That's why you have easy uh, solutions, so-called, in West Africa, well, rampant coup d'etat against uh, elected government. Well, maybe partly has to do with the disappointment with the uh, elected uh, leaders. Putting, uh, casting your thoughts ahead, say, 10 years, where would you like to see Timor-Leste in terms of conditions, in terms of the relationships with the world? First, I, in 10 years, I don't want to see a single child malnourished. I don't want to see a single mother uh, malnourished. I want to see absolute gender equality. Uh, I want to see uh, the country remaining a model of tolerance, of, of human fraternity. And a robust, good, re continuing good relationship with uh, our neighbors, uh, with everyone, with uh, United States, with China. I have a great admiration for the United States, and I do have a great admiration for China. Doesn't mean I agree with the Chinese model of political system, uh, but who am I to to judge, uh, you know, different models? As long as human beings are not deprived of freedom, human beings are not are protected from torture, arbitrary arrests, arbitrary disappearance killings. Other than that, who am I to judge, for instance, a monarchy uh, that deliver to the, uh, to the people and the people love their king, their queen? That's great, even if it might not be a Western-style democracy. <laughs> and uh, uh, I am a great admirer of uh, Jordan, King Abdallah, and the Gulf countries. And, well, they they deliver to their people and they give stability. The, uh, uh, aren't they democracy? Yeah, maybe not, I don't care. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm, I'm not a fanatic dem democracy that elects people, no. Uh, democracies have to deliver. Deliver peace, deliver tolerance, and deliver uh, 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 gender equality. Uh, rescue people from extreme poverty. Yeah, and that's what democracy is all about. Otherwise, yes, it loses credibility and uh, and uh, is abandoned. And, uh, one of the democracies in your backyard, as it were, is Australia. Uh, what's the situation with the Australians now? Because that's oh. been a few tricky moments as yes, well. Yes, yes, we did have uh, some tension because of. Uh, our maritime boundary with Australia, where there's a lot of oil and gas, Australia wanted the whole uh, Timor Sea practically to themselves, based on uh, a bogus claim of a continental shelf. We argue for medium line for our uh, permanent maritime boundary. We, Australia, as a democracy, very mature country, accepted, accepted, uh, and we won the case. And uh, we have an excellent relationship. Australia is our uh, uh, number one donor country that help us in many ways. They also help in our security, train our forces, our police. Uh, but so is Indonesia, so is Portugal. Uh, one of our main friends and partners is Portugal. But so is Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Cambodia, Vietnam. <laughs> I've asked you to cast your mind forward. Now if I can ask you to go back the other way. Could you have seen yourself sitting here in New York as a bona fide member of the United Nations when you were a, a young man? Well, I always uh, dream and always desire our flag, Timor Leste flag, to fly uh, here. And uh, 24 years later, I came here for the hoisting of our flag. Timor became the 183 member, 183rd member of the UN. It's a big moment was a big moment, emotional. And how do you feel sitting here now as the leader uh, of your country? I, that, uh, I personally contributed a bit. I achieved a bit for the country, for the people. 
The rest, recognition or not, I don't care. Uh, the people are free, uh, must remain free, happy, that's what uh, we care. Because otherwise, sometimes we achieve independence after years of struggle. And then the same people who led the people towards independence betray. And the people no longer free, although the country is independent, you have an autocracy, dictatorship. Uh, so I, I feel uh, happy, vindicated, because we have a, a functioning democracy, people are very free. Still not completely free from uh, poverty. That is a failure on our part. And what have you made of uh, this year's UN? What's, uh, what are your interpretations of it so far? Well, uh, unfortunately, well, the UN is what it is. It is a forum. It, one is disappointed when you think too much of the UN, that the UN is like a global problem solver. It is not. The, those who are responsible for uh, the wars and the problems that are going on, Ukraine, well, it was not the Secretary General of the UN who invaded <laughs> Ukraine, it is Putin who invaded. And the ongoing wars in uh, Yemen, uh, ongoing war problems in uh, Libya, in uh, uh, continuing problems in Syria, in uh, Afghanistan, in Myanmar. Well, <laughs> problems, uh, conflicts, uh, mushrooming uh, everywhere. And then you have a Security Council, uh, too simplistic to say it is outdated. Well, uh, if Russia, China, US, France and UK were to have uh, enough wisdom and statesmanship uh, to collectively with other non-member security council like India and Japan, Indonesia, well, maybe many conflicts would be resolved, many conflicts would be, be prevented regardless of uh, the current structure of the UN. Sometimes I see the discussion a bit too simplistic. Expand uh, membership of Security Council. Yes, it should be because uh, to represent the current uh, demographics of the world. But this in itself is not going to uh, fill the gaps about to not able to address, prevent the conflict in Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine could have been prevented, could have been prevented, but uh, uh, so, but I don't blame the UN for that. Uh, President Horta, thank you so much for talking to us on TRT World. Yeah.